I want to okay. thank everyone for coming today. Uh, this is a joint venture uh, to present Helen's calligraphy program with her to Harborfields and South Huntington Library patrons and anyone else who would like to learn and enjoy. This is the first of a three part series. So I hope you can join us for the other two as well. Um, I think we have one more minute or so to go uh, before yeah. it's actually four o'clock. So if we could just give a few more minutes, uh, I will turn off yeah. the doorbell and then you can start whenever you're ready. So you know what, um, do you want me to wait another minute? I, I have 3.50, I have now four o'clock on the um, computer, on the so whenever you're ready. Okay, so I will start then. And I wanna thank you all for being on time. So um, we can have a nice, lovely hour together where um, I will be demonstrating in this class something called calligraffiti. But let me introduce myself first. If you didn't already hear, this is me in my little artist booth that I built at the beginning of the pandemic so that I could have a drive-by museum and display some of my art. And um, my name is Helen Murdoch Prep. And besides being an art teacher to both children and adults, I'm a theater educator and um, I've directed over 50 plays and musicals. So that's why Bernadette's voice, I heard that right away. I was like, mm, that's a beautiful voice. Um, but anyway, I am an artist in my own right and I make a lot of art. So today I am happy to get the opportunity to create right before your very eyes. And I, I certainly hope it inspires you to maybe um, take a lettering class one day um, and I don't know, maybe look into it more at the library. There are tons of books on lettering and I hope to inspire you to maybe take lettering classes. But today, today is all about sitting back and enjoying the ride. So let me begin by showing you actually what we're not doing today. This is just so you know, I'm competent as an artist. This is some of my watercolors. I teach that as well. I'm also an illustrator. So you'll see there's a lot of um, figures in my watercolors. This piece is actually hanging in the Harbor Fields Library. If you get a chance, um, I'm part of the, um, the Firefly artists um, who are in Northport. And we have an exhibit um, at the Harbor Fields Library. So if you wanna come and take a look, I think you've got until Friday. This is a piece called Emily's Moon. Again, you're getting the idea yeah, a lot of whimsy in my work. A lot of love. There's always lots of hearts. Lots of animals. I love the innocent nature of animals. I love to try to capture that. I know, you're like, well, where's the lettering? We're getting there. <laughs> this is again, ah, love, whimsy, and children. And this is, of course, realistic portraiture. And this is my daughter. And the, I guess you may, you may figure out that if you're doing realistic portraiture, it's gotta look like the person. So I wish she was here so I could say, look, see, it looks just like her, but that does look just like her. Okay, enough of the watercolor. I hope you now see that I am confident, but we are here for calligraffiti. So what is calligraffiti? Calligraffiti is a scripted hand it's cursive when I was growing up, that's what we called it. So the letters are connected. And we add, on top of it, we add graffiti elements. Shading, shadows, you can see there's some shadows there. There's googly stuff off to the side. I know googly stuff is not a technical term, but I couldn't think of what else to call it. Filigree, that's the word. It's filigree all around there. So let's look at some more samples before I demonstrate for you. There's lots of ways to incorporate using calligraffiti. And again, I add my illustrations and I illuminate quotes, but what you're seeing right here is basically a cursive hand. And while it may look complicated, it's actually based on seven shapes. It's very easy to learn. I teach grades uh, third grade and up how to do calligraffiti. And the reason I pulled this piece out this is a beautiful quote. I'll read it to you. And um, it's just, it just says everything I feel. The desire to create is one of the deepest yearnings of the human soul. 
Now, I wonder if you've experienced that as well. You don't have to be Picasso or Monet or some great artist painter, but that yearning, you know, this is why a lot of people like crafts. They want, it is a yearning to create. And I think that we all have it in us. You certainly know when you look at children, they've got it naturally. Everyone's born with it. And uh, they have a direct relationship with their own inspiration. And so when I teach calligraphy, and that again is what's demonstrated in the word create here, I try to draw that out. And I say, anyone can do it. It's a technical pursuit, really. And then you add your own artistry. So that's, um, I hope, hopefully, a, an inspiring quote. And uh, of course, our favorite guy, Michelangelo, one of my favorite guys, he said this, I am still learning. So I am in the lifelong learner um, group of people. I believe that we are all capable of learning throughout our lives. Again, look at this calligraphy, right? I just took the word learning and went crazy on it. So while it may look impressive to your eyes, when I teach this and I break it down, everyone's looks similar to mine. Because really, if you can draw a line and a dot, that's all these things are. I just outlined the letter and then I made dots and lines and lots of hearts. Like I said, you're gonna see that a lot in my work. So let's look at some more samples before I demo. Here's another way to, um, again, this is calligraphy. Let me see if you can see the whole thing. I love babies. You can probably tell, right? And dream on. Today's kind of a good day for that, dreaming on. And what I did here was I just connected um, the letters and made sort of webbing, like uh, tangled in sleep. This is a good quote too. Laughter is the fireworks of the soul. Now, the reason I'm showing you this piece is because here's the, the calligraphy, which again, scripted hand, shadows, little dots and highlights, but then is the fireworks of the soul is actually the same lettering as this, only it's done without a brush marker. So this was done with what's called a monoline. So there's just one line, one thin line. There's no thick and thin. You see that? There's thick here, there's thin here. When we learn calligraphy, we learn about putting pressure on a marker so we get thick lines and thin lines. It's really very simple, I tell you. And anyway, this is if you don't use the marker and you just use a one, just you could use a big pen, you could use a Sharpie. It's the same thing, but are you seeing from our past, if you, again, I'm like a hundred years old, no, not really, but I'm, you know, I'm up there and I certainly learned penmanship and got graded for it and um, got a C minus in it too. <laughs> but I figured it out, but um, that's what this is. It's a scripted hand and you can see vestiges of it from when we grew up. I hope you can anyway. People really like this piece. Um, one of the other things I try to teach is that the word should look like what it's enhancing. So this word is believe. So of course there has to be a star. There has to be some sort of um, oomph to it that says believe and in a very vibrant way. And again, all of this stuff, it looks so complicated. Very simple to learn, really very simple. So if you took a class with me, I give out a guideline sheet. And the reason I'm showing you the guidelines is because I want you to see how simple this is. And when I start demonstrating, you'll go, oh yeah, I see. There are basically seven to eight strokes. If you include this stroke called an entrance stroke, they all have lovely names, except the O, we just call it the O. But all of these shapes, when combined, make the lowercase letters of the alphabet. It's true. I know you maybe think, oh, may, is this a P? No, this is actually the top of an H, the top of a B. But we learned about the A sender loop and then we apply it to our letters. We connect them and you're doing calligraphy. So here is again, some of the ways that um, I teach how you connect the shapes. For example, remember on the first page there, we had an entrance stroke 
and we had underturns. You see those? I laid out for you like a math equation. This is why it's technical. Anyone can do it. If you make an entrance stroke and you add an underturn and then another underturn next to it, you get a U. If you add a little wiggly thing there, you get a W. So anyway, I'm not instructing. I'm just, I'm telling you where calligraphy comes from and how I give out all of these um, guideline sheets so that you can practice at home. So one day, I hope you'll take a class with me. But for now, let me get to the good stuff, right? Good stuff is demonstrating this. This is my nephew's name. It's nice and long. It's got letters that go up. These are called ascenders and letters that go down, descenders. This is the basis of calligraphy. There's just, it's really just um, cursive. But what we do is we add to it. So here's the word grace. Same way as Christopher, we started out with the basis, Christopher. But with grace, then I added shadows. I added highlights. I added a darker pink on top, just like the graffiti artist did. Okay, so this is when I teach a class. This is in fact, one of the projects that we work on, the word peace. Now, of course you see there's a lot going on because I'm instructing, I'm teaching, I'm drawing a sun here to teach you how to make shadows and stuff. So anyway, when I used to teach in person before COVID, everybody, this is a folder, as you can see, everybody got their own folder with their name on it. So to that end, I'm gonna stop talking now and I'm gonna demonstrate the beautiful art of calligraphy. So here we go. First word I'm gonna be demonstrating is the word joyful. This is just a regular piece of paper. I think I will use these two colors. I'm gonna start with the light one. Joyful. That's the basis, lot going on here. This is how I add my shadows. Actually, it's not shadows, it's shading. This is a, dark, this is a shade darker than this. The graffiti artists take a letter and they cut it in half, either from the bottom or the top. This is called a Tombow dual brush marker. It means it has two sides. It's got the brush marker side, and if I flip it over, it's got the bullet nib side. The bullet nib side is a mono line, which means it gives me one thin line. So I'm just gonna draw circles and lines. Another enhancing feature for calligraphy. Plus, you have to admit, the word calligraphy is a fun thing to say. <laughs> I'm not an artist that likes to stay in the line. So if I see a letter ends here, I go, oh, well, I think it'd be fun to do that. Oh, wait a minute. It doesn't end end here, right? Can't I bring this up and over? Well, sure I can, I'm the creator. And I hope one day you're the creator doing this. There are no rules. There's aesthetic and there's um, balance, but um, you would learn that. Anyway, so that's the second step. Now I'm going to give some shadows. It's so funny not to teach you how to make the shadows because that's what I do. I teach, but I'm going to try to be as quiet as possible.
you know the marker is not being quiet. <laughs> Do you hear it? It's very squeaky. Why I feel joyful just doing that. Shadows. Next up, I'm gonna do the word dream and I'm gonna take it to the next level. I'm gonna leave joyful like this, but watch what I do with the word dream. Let's switch colors. I'm going to use these two greens. If you are a person that's interested in um, investigating dual brush markers, the Tombow, that's the name of this brand, the Tombow dual brush markers always have a number for the color. You see that? 173, one, one, 195. Interesting, right? Dream. Shading. Other side. Bullet nib. Hearts. Oops, dots. So many dots. Now I'm gonna show you dangles. Oops, wait, let's do our shadows first. Meditation in motion. Dangles. This is my T-square. I have a stamp on it. Look at that. It's the big love. Do you remember that stamp? There's a little tiny character carrying this gigantic heart. I call it the big love. It's like he's going, I'm coming. I got the big love. I'm going to rescue you with love. <laughs> Very silly, but I love that stamp. So it's on my T-square and I'm going to make dangles with it. What the heck are dangles? You'll see. This is a micron. Microns are magic. They have archival ink. You can use them with watercolor because guess what? They're permanent. They're heaven. They have numbers on them. This is an 03, which is pretty small. You can see it's a very, 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 very tiny little line and that's just what I want. Dangles. Helen, what color is the gray um, shadowy? That color, it's it's called a neutral. It has an N in it. So it's a very pale gray and it's N95, nice and light. Mm -hmm. the, higher, the higher the number on the neutrals, the lighter it goes. So if you get an N75, it's going to be darker. Is everybody like catching the happiness? Of what lettering can do. 
So what the heck are these things? I'm just making lines kind of randomly. But they're all perpendicular. Let's see, maybe a couple more over here. Oh, maybe, oh, right in here. Maybe right here. So I used my um, ruler to show you that you can do that too to enhance your letters. But once I have down a straight line, I can make them curvy. Let me show you what I mean. I can start making little curvy lines like this. You see that? I just went. So let's make some more curvy lines. And maybe I'll add some hearts here. Curvy line. Welcome to Dangles. Lots of dots. Anyone can make a dot. Anyone can make a curvy line. And if you don't feel confident, you can start with a pencil to make your curvy lines and then go over them. Remember, you can just erase. So we started with the word dream and suddenly it's taking on far more importance than just its letters. We are adding dangles, hearts, stars. I haven't even started adding color yet or even illustration if you wanted to. I'm going to stick with my dangles now so you can watch. So look what's happening. And again, I haven't started adding colors yet, but just making these straight lines that come from the bottom of the letters and above the letters, wherever you want. Look what it does. Okay, so that's dangles. Now I'm gonna demonstrate another word in calligraphy. Oh, wait a second. You know what I didn't do? Silly me. Here's another thing that we use with calligraphy. This is a white gel pen. I really like this brand. I don't work for the company or anything. It's called Uniball Signo. I like this brand because it's very creamy and opaque. So watch what this does. This adds highlights on top of the letters. All I did was draw a circle. Now I'm gonna draw a sort of curvy line. Have you noticed how graffiti artists use that as a pop? It's just a dot and a line. And you don't have to just do dots. You can do zigzags, curls, anything you want, because you're the creator. OK, so I'm going to put this aside for a minute, because now I want to demonstrate um, decorating outside the letter. So we started with just a simple calligraphy uh, project. And then we took it a little further by adding dangles. Now I'm going to add some stuff on the inside. So you know what? I need you to wake up just a tiny bit because I need a word. So does anyone have a word they think I should do? Joanne. Wish, wishes. Wishes? Yes? Yes. Okay. I'm going to do that in... Um, pink. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Wishes.
Hey, sender. Wishes. So now what I'm going to do to enhance wishes, before I even put shadows or anything else on it, this is how I did the project Believe. Here's a beautiful word, which in its own right looks just fantastic, wishes. But now I'm going to go back and take a micron. I can use any color I want, but I'm going to demonstrate in black so that you can see it. Okay, and now I'm going to embellish the outsides of the letters. And again, I'm trying not to teach and talk, but I just want you to note that all I'm doing is making lines and dots, a couple of squiggles, very highly technical thing we're doing. <laughs> okay, I'll start over here and just watch. Well, you can't see it that way. Let me see if I turn it. Yeah, this is better. Helen, you're making it look easy and getting lots of compliments in the chat box. I want you to know it is easy. And I'm so grateful to hear that. When I teach children, and I'm talking third grade, they're just getting their penmanship down. They come out of the classroom and the parents say, did the teacher do that? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no, mama, I did. Because if you are a person that likes to doodle, what you're doing is doodling outside your letters. I'm not even thinking. I'm just Googling. Googling is not a word either. I have got to get it together with my lingo. Otherwise you guys will think I'm like a crazy artist or something. If you like to do Zentangles, you can do those too. This is a big Zentangle thingy. Thingy, see? Oh. I'm trying not to cover. This is not a more advanced class. This is everybody learns. Um, when I teach a class, I don't teach all the letters of the alphabet in the class because our class is usually just an hour. But at the end of that hour, you have a project. Um, the Harborfield Library has been wonderful, um, allowing us, we just did peace. We did the word peace and everybody did great. Helen, someone was asking if uh, you can show letters, but I wanted to let them know that this is just a demonstration. Um, but yeah. We do do classes elsewhere and through Harborfields and other libraries at other times. Yes, and thank you for that, Susan. But if you don't mind, the teacher heart in me wants to give them what they want. So do you mind if I demonstrate a couple it's, letters? It's okay. entirely up to you. Thank you. So guys, I'm gonna hang on to this. We have plenty of time. Um, so I'm just gonna put wishes aside for a minute and I am gonna demonstrate to you how those letters get made. Let me find um, that first sheet. That's so important. When you get the calligraphy packet. Um, well, I can't find it. You have to see my desk. There's paper everywhere. But I'm gonna, oh, here it is. I found it. Okay. So what I pointed out is, these are the basic shapes that make all the lowercase letters of the alphabet. If you're thinking that that does not compute with your brain, I understand. But now watch as I demonstrate, that's exactly what happens. So right over here, you're going to see there's a compound curve. That's what the name of the shape is. And over here is a descender loop. To make the letter Y, you make a compound curve with a descender loop. It's just like math. Watch. Here's my compound curve. Compound curve, right? The way I made that, I used light pressure on my brush hard pressure, 
and light pressure. Compound curve. Now I'm going to make the descender loop. You have a perfect Y every time. And then when you grow up, you can do this. <laughs> when you become an even more swashbuckling, flourishing type of calligrapher. So let's write a word. Showing again these shapes. I'll write one word and then I'll go back to my demoing. So to write the letter M, I'm going to make two overturns and a compound curve. Same shapes. Look, compound curve that was here. Now it's going to be at the end of the M. Watch. Can you see? Overturn. I just made this shape. I'm going to make it again right next to it. Overturn. Now I'm going to make the compound curve. And what letter did I make? Yep. M. M. Now I'm going to use the shape of the O. Right next to it, I'm going to put an underturn because I want to make an A. And that's how you make an A. Look at that. It was an O and an underturn. It was just this shape and this shape. And that made the A. Now I'm going to go into another. Remember these overturns? I'm going to do it again. Overturn. Look, there's the overturn. Compound curve. We saw it here. We saw it here. It's going to be in the N. Watch. And you wrote man. And it will come out that way every time. OK, so that was a brief demo. Did that satisfy the person who asked? Were you like, holy cow, that really is doable. <laughs> it is. And again, with my guideline sheets, oh, good, you said yes. My guideline sheets, I break it down. There's that Y. Compound curve plus descender loop equals the Y. OK, so let's go back to uh, wishes. Helen? Another yeah. question is about the type of paper that you're using. Mm -hmm. And if you are willing to share the guidelines that you're using as well. Um, what do you mean share the guidelines? Uh, the handouts, in other words, the- Well, I only do that when you sign up for a class. Because then you need instruction and you need to learn you know i take you through the whole process the shapes that we make to start to learn about pressure light pressure and hard pressure and once you've got that down we move on to making letters so um and then the paper i'm using is really just regular drawing paper i don't know if you can see it's a little it's got a little cream base it's very thin but um here is a piece of watercolor paper i was going to demonstrate um on top of a piece of watercolor paper. This I just made a splashy background uh, for fun. And um, so let's go back to whether, well, you know, let's pause for a minute. I am gonna flip around my camera in about 10 minutes to, to answer all of your questions. Um, yeah, cause I see questions are coming in and I wanna keep demoing to, um, to, so hang on to your questions guys, write them down on a little piece of paper in literally 10 minutes, I'm gonna flip it around and show you um, or uh, explain to you any questions that you have or answer. I can't talk and do this two things at once. Isn't that funny? Okay, so let's go back to wishes. So what I started to explain and what I was starting to do was putting um, filigree around the, uh, the word. So I'm not gonna talk now, I'm just gonna demo. As you can see, none of this is terribly difficult. Huh. 
Hi. Yeah. Hi. Oh, it's it's taken. Yeah, it's I think someone is not muted. Yeah. Uh, thank you. No, it's taken. Thank you very much. Anyway, so we would go on and on until we kind of build up layers of these beautiful lines and dots. So before I put my camera around, I just wanna show you one more thing. If you are a watercolor artist, you can use watercolor paper. And here I just threw down a bunch of uh, paint and just let it you know, um, kind of diffuse because I wanted to show you what it looks like to do calligraphy on a colorful background. So, um, with this, this is green. I should probably use something that, that would be bold on top of it. So I think I'm gonna go, what do you think? What um, guys, what color? I'm gonna show you some colors I have. I certainly have black as well. What do you think would look good on top of there? You can unmute to tell me. Yellow and orange maybe? Yellow and orange, okay. And somebody said blue. So analogous colors, this is a whole thing. Um, so yellow and orange on top of green may make it a bit muddy, but blues and greens are right next to each other on the, the rainbow and yellow is also, but the orange is not. So analogous colors, which means close to each other on the rainbow, won't make what we call mud. It won't make a brown. So it, I'm gonna go in this color range if that's okay. But I need a word. Joyful. Joyful? Great. We did jo wait, wait, wait. We did joyful at the beginning. Oh, I'm sorry. You did needed somebody say starfish? Did I see the word starfish just fly by there? I want to do starfish. Let's do starfish. Ooh. Big love. Let's do starfish. Where do you see the S? So I'm going to start with this blue. Yes, starfish. I said starfish. You did? Yes. Good. That's what we're going to do. Good word. You know why it's a good word? Because of course it's starfish, but it's got ascenders, lines that go up, and descenders, Favorite lines that go down. Color. What? Sorry, what did you say? I love starfish. Good. Starfish are lovely. I am going to um, add some more color.
great about polygraffiti is things can be big. Okay, starfish. All right, guys, I am going to turn my camera over or I want to be able to answer all of your questions. Okay, so don't look at the monitor for a minute because when I flip it over, sometimes, um, you know, I don't want you to get dizzy. It bobbles a bit. Okay, so here I go. I did it. It's always a moment of terror for me because <laughs> I'm not great at tech stuff. I can do art. <laughs> So hello, let me put you on gallery so I can see you. If you want to be seen, you can um, take your video off and uh, so I can see you. And if you have any questions at all, I'm here to answer them. Well, uh, when and where do you have the classes for this? So um, for calligraphy, I, I don't think I actually have one coming up soon, <laughs> but I do have watercolor classes and other types of calligraphy coming up. Um, as Susan said at the beginning, um, I'll be teaching broad edge pen, actually demonstrating broad edge pen on um, March 24th. And I'll be demonstrating pointed pen, which is um, like what, how the constitution was written, like with a feather. Um, that will be on February 24th. Um, I also do demonstrating um, fork calligraphy, how to do calligraphy with a household fork. So um, that'll be in those two programs, um, but those are once a month. If you want something more consistent, I hope it's okay. Susan, if you are there, am I allowed to give out my email? Yes, you may. And uh, we'll have to talk about booking that calligraphy class again. Okay. Yeah, because again, we just did that at your library, at the Harborfields Library, but I'm gonna hold up my email. And for those of you who want to follow along, I have an Instagram account where I put up little tiny videos to teach you about it. They're literally a minute long, how to make the underturn, how to make the compound curve. I'm a full service artist for you. So if you want that information is on this card. So if you wanna take a screenshot or write it down, my email is hmurdoch at, whoops, optonline.net. Make sure I'm a Murdoch with a K, not an H. And then my Instagram account is a public account. So you can go right there. You don't have to be part of Instagram. And that's where you can see, I put a lot of videos up of pointed pen calligraphy, broad edge calligraphy. There's my um, watercolors up. It's perfectly safe for children. Um, so there's nothing uh, inappropriate or offensive. And you'll see a very young picture of me. 